Reports of a possible attack on the National Assembly by Boko Haram insurgents causes unrest in the country's capital. And the remaining abducted students of the Federal College of Forestry and Mechanization Afaka in Kaduna State have been released. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann Kong. Lawmakers have been informed of a possible attack by Boko Haram insurgents in the National Assembly a complex and other public buildings in Abuja. Several members of the House of Representatives confirmed that they had been warned of the imminent attack by the terrorist group. Shall we recall that the governor of Niger State, Sani Bello, had on April 26, 2021, raised alarm on the Boko Haram terrorists taking over a part of the state hoisting their flag in Kauri village. Bello had said Abuja was not safe with Boko Haram's presence, a two-hour journey from the federal capital territory. Well, to discuss this, uh, I'm being joined by Adewale Adekola Justice, Ademola Justice, and uh, he's a political analyst. Also joining us is Dixon Osaji. He's a security expert. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm going to start with you, um, because you are a security person. Uh, um, the seat of legislative power uh, at the National Assembly, obviously, uh, is the third, if not the second highest um, position of power across the country. Um, this could be threatened, of course, this is a threat that has gone out for, to the members of the National Assembly. Um, does this, what does this mean, you know, security-wise, and for us, the common-minded persons, when, a, a terrorist group like Boko Haram says we're going to attack the National Assembly, names it, and then says, and other VIP locations. What, what, what does this mean? Well, thank you, Mary Ann. Uh, for me, it, it uh, actually, it, it means nothing to me. And uh, I must tell you the truth, it actually means nothing to me because uh, the legislative house has really been a hostile environment uh, for some time ago. Hostile environment in the sense that uh, they are supposed to be our role model. They are supposed to be the role, national role model. They are supposed to lead by example. But here you and I uh, saw uh, some few years ago where uh, with uh, some talks we are led into the National Assembly uh, to cut away with our national myths. You see, people learn from what they see. People learn from what, uh, what is happening within the globe. And uh, when I saw this uh, uh, letter today that... Uh, a threat uh, uh, message has been sent to the National Assembly. I said, well, uh, they've been bargaining for this, and uh, nobody cares to even bring into account those people that led talks into our National Assembly. That tells you that if our legislature uh, uh, could be playing around with talks in the National Assembly, that means, uh, Mary Ann, they are certifying criminality. But let me take a departure from that. Mm -hmm. This is a national threat, and uh, it's really, really worrisome, and... Uh, the world is aware of this threat. And I would advise the uh, National Assembly and the Chief Security Officer of the National Assembly uh, not to take this threat for, 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 for granted. Uh, they need to look into their protection in depth. They also need to look into their cycle of uh, uh, concentration. You know, uh, Everybody coming to the National Assembly uh, must be uh, on the red alert, proper screening. And uh, let's pray and see what happens. But uh, they should take the bull by the horn because this must not be taken for granted. Like you said, um they have to up their game in terms of security. That they have done. They have said that they are now beginning to use the presidential gate into the National Assembly. And, of course, there's um, going to be an easier access for members and there's going to be more scrutiny. But I want to go back to this rumored attack. Um, it's not just on the National Assembly. They have named other VIP locations and government facilities, meaning that they could hit anything that belongs to the government. Um, should it, shouldn't this be like a national alert of sorts to raise it to the highest? I don't know if we have 
national alerts in, in this country because you know when there's a threat level in other countries in Sena climbs, they raise the you know alerts. I don't know if there's any such thing for us in Nigeria. So especially where uh, we're talking about the FCT here, which is again the sit-up power. Um, shouldn't there be a, a rise in security, not just in the National Assembly, but all across the state? Mary Ann, you see, uh, when we talk about security, we call uh, risk priority, and there's one called uh, threat assessment. So, you know, uh, for me, I, 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 why I'm not too much uh, panic or maybe too much worried is that uh, the people in Abuja, they are human beings. Uh, the personality of human beings. Uh, Nigerians are dying every day from East West Sarah North. Uh, we have people being killed in the Northeast, in the Northwest, in the Southeast, and everywhere. Uh, like you rightly said, the threat level uh, is on the high rise. And uh, I think that uh, we should have a form of national uh, uh, security agency that will be you know, analyzing and assessing uh, the threat situation here in Nigeria so that we'll be able to you know, inform Nigeria the threat level in which we are. But for me, uh, with all what is happening, I'm going to tell you for free that the threat level is on a high rise, the risk level is on a high rise. And uh, for me, I want to advise that uh, the security agents are uh, right up to the board. They must go before the laws. Uh, Mary Ann, when we talk about security, uh, security is in totality uh, the freedom from danger. Now, when fear is being administered into the public and into the space, into the environment, into the Abuja territory, security has been defeated because when you live in a state of fear, security is being defeated. What the National Assembly and uh, our security agents should be doing now, they should not be panic, you know, they should relax. We are talking about Nigeria. We did, Nigeria, is, Nigeria is one of the strongest countries in Africa. We have the most strongest security agents in the world. But Mary Ann is regrettable that our security agents has been compromised. I see no reason why some group of criminal elements will be posing threats on our national defense. We are talking on the seat of power here, national defense. The Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Air Force must see these threats as a war situation and they should go before the enemy. Don't allow the enemy to succeed in their plan. They must go before the enemy. And everybody must watch his back because these guys, when they issue our threats, they definitely accomplish their threats. That is what terrorism is all about. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to you because I want to go into the nitty-gritty of how we should handle this. But I'm going to you, Mr. Ademola. Um, why do you think that this people, this group of people that the government told us years ago that they had technically defeated, um, have the um, audacity to not just hoist their flag close to the FCT, now they're issuing threats uh, to the National Assembly and VIP locations in the FCT. Where do you think they got the audacity from? Is it, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but what, where do you think that all of this is coming from? Thank you very much. Yeah, like the other speaker has just said, what you have just seen is the true reflection of the national security architecture of the country. You will see, as a nation, some years back, the former Senate president, at an instance, he was addressing a national security issue, and he said he would advise or suggest to the federal government. You know, when the Senate president is mentioning federal government, who does the Senate president think is the federal government? The federal government is the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary at the top echelon there. But you will see the issue in Nigeria today is a section or a segment of the government feels another section has it more. You see, at the we have a national legislature that is preemptive. They will have done something through the legislature to nip the board or the, to tame the board of the security stress of Nigeria. But up until recently, a section of the country has been thinking it is just the presidency that worries on national security. And like you have just seen, the audacity, so to say, like you have just used, came because of... Hello, Mr. These Dibon. guys okay. are aware of what Nigeria is and what our national security structure looks like. You see, it is so unfortunate that a security threat issued to a segment of the country, just the National Assembly members and some few IRIs and national infrastructures can generate so much routes like this. It means that the government, when I mean government now, I mean both the National Assembly and the presidency and even our judicial members, they've not considered even the security of the commoners. 
You see, those people at the end of affairs of Nigeria today, they are not up to a million out of the 244 million Nigerians. So why are they now shouting to the, to, 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 to the RA? Just because a threat has been needed to a few of them. It's to show you that they care less about Nigerians. So like those guys that are issuing the threat, they know the makeup of the nation. They know how laggard and how lackluster our national leaders are. Because up until now, have you had any responsive response or contribution by the National Assembly about the national attack on the country? Some days or a few weeks ago, the Niger State government came up with an issue. Please, did you hear any response by the National Assembly? Well, well, the National Assembly is not here to defend itself, so I'll play the devil's advocate. We have uh -huh. heard them a couple of times say, that, call on the president to rise up to the occasion and deal with the situation of insecurity in the country. Uh, let's give them that benefit of doubt. They have, okay. at some point okay. or the other, called on the presidency. And, and this goes to buttress what you said, that uh, you know they, they seem to have justice in their jobs or their responsibilities to uh, the, the executive. Of course, it is, it is a nation, it is the federal government, it's the executive and the judiciary. Mr. Demol, I think we're, we're having some connection problems with you, so we'll just go to uh, Dixon and, and talk more about the security uh, of the country. Now, uh, Dixon, let's talk about the nitty gritty here. Um, while I was reading through or uh, doing my research on this particular situation, I was just wondering to myself, um, why do we have to, I mean, it's okay to try to secure the National Assembly and also keep an eye on uh, facilities, VIP facilities and, you know, uh, st uh, facilities that belong to the state and the federal government or the FCT. But what about going to Boko Haram where they are? If they have hoisted a flag in Niger State, how about dealing with the guys and repelling them from Niger State and not just worrying about when they will have to hit, if they will hit, in Abuja. Mary Ann, that is a very, very intelligent question. You see, uh, we have been talking, I'm even tired of talking, because uh, I see no reason why Boko Haram will be holding Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Air Force, hostage for the past 12 years. We're talking about 12 years. A child who was born in 2009 is now done with his primary school and is in secondary school, and Boko Haram is still surviving. Now, this is the issue now. What we need to do as a country, we need to, like, call the, declare a state of emergency to our, on our military. The military needs, there, needs, there needs to be a declaration of state of emergency. The military needs to tell us what the problem is, Mary Ann. We have our soldiers going to the international community. Liberia, Sierra Leone, uh, other uh, Congo, and other African country, you know, bringing victory. I remember Mary Ann when I was a Barak boy in 1990. Yeah, uh, my father, they were the first set of soldiers that went to the Sierra Leone war when the, when the war broke out in Sierra Leone. Uh, out of about 765 soldiers, then 65 battalion in Sokoto State, about uh, they all came alive, apart in a session of about three soldiers that died in action, one by malaria, the other one by typhoid, and one by, by ambush or so. These are the, this is what we talk about braveness. Nigeria has the most bravest soldier. Like you rightly say, why are we not taking the war to these guys? The foundation is 40, Mary Ann. Uh, I will align that to a uh, uh, deployment mechanism because the military has been mismanaged for so long, Mary Ann. Uh, and the reason why they have been mismanaged is that at the events, at the occurrence of any incident, they will quickly send in the military to go and forestall. We fail to give the police an opportunity to try and fail. Now, there's what we call see finish in the local palace. This criminal element, they've seen us finish. They're not even scared. Oh dear. Uh... They take their attack to our base, strike our base. Just imagine taking... Okay? Go ahead, go ahead. We're listening. All right, just imagine uh, some few days ago, uh, this criminal element went to, you know, confiscate or Ebola is or confiscate or, uh, you know, captured uh, some ammo tanks that was just newly bought for our soldiers. Imagine Nigerian Air Force bombarding on our, on our own troops in the battlefield, killing a lot of our soldiers. And the, uh, the public space was silenced. Nobody wanted to talk about that. We don't eulogize our, our soldiers. We don't bring them into the but, but really, Dixon, what are, really are we soldiers. what are we supposed to say? Because you see, uh, whether we like it or not, security matters are less for security people. And that's why you're here on this show. I can't just sit here and deliberate on the tactics or the, the modus operandi of security agencies in the country. 
Uh, and yes, questions were being raised, but who's going to answer that question, especially uh, when you made reference to the fact that soldiers, we were having friendly fire of sorts and it hit some of our men. There is something going on, but who's going to tell us what's going on? They would say, well, it's, it's uh, you know, the army or the security agency's business is not, uh, you know, for the common or bloody civilian, to borrow the words of soldiers. So really, nobody's saying anything. So how do we really know where to start in dealing with this? Because from what I'm hearing, if we're not able to deal with the internal um, you know, crisis that is going on, if there be any in the army, it, within our forces. How do we put ourselves together and have concerted efforts to fight a known enemy, which is Boko Haram? <laughs> okay. Uh, you see, um, it's quite regrettable that uh, we have a leader that has been so silent, that has been silent for so long, I mean to say, uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I voted uh, for him. Nigerians voted for him. A lot of people voted for him. But uh, I don't know if the president is keeping malice with Nigerians because I see no reason why sometimes the National Assembly will be begging the president to come and address Nigerians. People will be crying from every nose and cranny, address, address Nigerians. Who does that in this universe? We have somebody who tried to come into power first time, he didn't succeed. Second time, he didn't succeed. Third time, he didn't succeed. When, he got, when we now decide to give him the opportunity, each time we cry to him, he don't want to address Nigerians. Mary Ann, until our president take the center stage, come on national television and say, hey guys, enough is enough. I am here by declaring war on these guys. We need to declare war on Boko Haram. It's a war situation. It's not uh, a conflict uh, situation. We are in a war situation now, and they are getting close to Abuja. Like you rightly say, who's going to address us? We have the Office of the National Security Advisor. If you don't tell Nigerians what the problem is, if you keep hiding the failures of our military, how do we suggest, how do we suggest a, a futuristic a successes and pray for them? Our soldiers must not die in vain. They must not, be, they must not die silent and nobody eulogizes them. They must come into the limelight of our TV stations. They must be given national barriers. They must be uh, broadcasted worldwide so that people will honor them that, hey, these are the guys that pay the supreme price. But we can't have a situation whereby our soldiers will die, friendly fire. How will you tell me in the 21st century you are having a friendly fire between Air Force and the Nigerian Army? When I went into investigation and I called my guys in the Northeast, I said, what is the problem? And they told me that the guys that came to attack the soldiers came on our own uh, Nigerian Army dresses and they mistook them for Nigerian soldiers. Okay, now having mistook them for Nigerian soldiers, was there an immediate activation of emergency alert to notify other battalions or the Air Force that, hey, tread with care, some of these guys are coming from social axis, they are putting on our uniform. But there is no proper coordination. This, what went wrong on that friendly fire, to be very honest, is not acceptable anywhere in the world in this 21st century. And the person that flew that flight must be arrested and well interrogated and investigated to tell us what went wrong, to, for him to have, to have gone and uh, detonate and destroy our soldiers. Our soldiers are dying every day. We must not take this. Now, coming back to your questions, Mary Ann, our president must rise up to the task. If he want to sleep, good luck for him. But I pray it's not too late for him to address Nigerians. Because when he keeps remaining silent, that means he's consenting to the criminal activities that is happening in Nigeria. Wow. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Demola, if you can hear me. Um, let's talk about those who have pointed fingers at not just Mr. President, but those who are in the leadership of this country, including politicians uh, in the leadership, uh, in the uh, leading party. Uh, why do you think that there is some form of a politicization of this, the, the insecurity that we're facing in the country? Is there any such thing as it being politicized in the first place? And if there be, why? Um, and what is giving room for this politicization? I mean, insecurity is insecurity. If there's a threat, there's a threat. Why do we have to politicize it, especially for a government who rose to power on the wings of wanting to deal with Boko Haram and literally decimating them? Thank you very much. Like, if I may join words with the other analysts, you see, the issue with Nigeria about our security, just like every other sphere of the economy of the country, is that failure of leadership. See, either politicians or political leaders or political sympathizers, if there is a will, if there is a sincere will by the leadership of the country to quell any particular issue, the way without and the ways and means are available. They will, all, they will tackle it. 
So what we have is insincerity of leadership. The leader, you see, as a president, you don't need to be a pleader to be to, to, to be appealed to by anybody, even if the National Assembly, before you act, as the president, you don't need to appeal to the army or the military. To run is an order. That's why he is called the commander in chief. He doesn't need to appeal. So the issue with Nigerian nation is that of a compromise. There's disloyalty, there's no patriotism. The military system is already sold out, it's given out, but they are using military and uh, their diplomatic issues to cover up the faces of Nigerians. So I don't want to give in to the fact that some people are the uh, political schemes or some, no, 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 not politicians, or not, it's the leadership of the country. If the leadership is set and determined, they don't need to appeal to anybody. They will quell the issues. Let me push you a bit further, Mr. Demola. Um, yeah. Just yesterday, we had a conversation about um, the presidency, you know, raising an alarm of, of an overthrow of his government. In fact, before yeah. then, the DSS had warned that, you know, people, they warned people not to speak ill of Mr. President. Um, yeah. and, and as at yesterday, the story was that sudden for former leaders and sudden religious leaders uh, are in cahoots to uh, upstage the government or even, even overthrow the government. And I yeah. asked a question yesterday. Most of my guests were unable to answer that question, so I'll pose it to you. Is this the time for Mr. President, especially the person who we're hoping to respond to all of the attacks that we're getting from left, right, and center, to be talking mm -hmm. about being overthrown, um, uh -huh. especially when we're facing something as sensitive as this? Is this the right time? Yep. Thank you very much. You see, a very strong signal of a weakling or a weak leadership or a weak structure is baseless accusations. As a trained internal controller for over 15 years, we were not trained to be interested in rumors. What Nigerians want to see is action. Do not entertain us through the journals or through the media by telling us you suspected or you have information that's so strong. See, when Abacha took General Basojo, he did not appeal to Nigerians. He did not contact, contact Nigerians before he acted. If you have confidential information that are based with facts, please, as a leader, run into action, take over or take up or seize whoever and deal according to the dictates of the Constitution. Anything short of that is just sheer leadership sympathy. Okay. They are just narrating away their failures. Hmm. That is not acceptable to Nigerians. Okay, and finally, treasonable felony is not it's not any, it's not a child's play. So mm -hmm. nobody should come and appeal to Nigerians and emotion first before taking action. If it is factual, Nigerians need responsive actions. Great, uh, and finally, I'm coming back to you. Um, the president called a security meeting uh, yesterday, and uh, with security chiefs, the National Assembly has also had one of those. Um, what are the hopes that you know? whatever they come up with from that meeting would help turn the page on what we're facing today. Um, let's not forget, another attack has been um, done, uh, I think in Abia State, that students in the university have been abducted. So it seems to be a free-for-all. Are you confident that there will be something tangible, something that Nigerians can hope uh, would turn things around, especially right now in the interim? The leadership. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm asking our security experts. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Mary Ann. Uh, uh, yes, the president uh, made a call and uh, you know had a security meeting with the study chief. Uh, I, I really appreciate the last uh, my my colleague there, the, the, the political analyst there, uh, that um, uh, confidential information is not an information that you just come to the public and you just start talking. We are warning. You don't plead to people with criminal conscience. You know, when you have any information at your conf at the confine mm -hmm. of the space, you act upon that information and you go before the enemy. Don't allow the enemy to regroup. Don't allow them to take uh, hold of your territory. Don't allow them to, uh, you know, succeed in their criminal plan. Now, going by the uh, threat uh, happening here in Nigeria, it's known as a multi-dimensional uh, security threat and. Uh, for you to curtail with multi-dimensional security threats, uh, you must be very, very systematic, you must be very, very tactical, and you must you know, apply a full-blown military engagement 
uh, with a non kinetic approach as well. So, like in the Southeast, uh, I have said it again and again that uh, I think, to my own opinion, that a new terrorism has been better, you know, because each time terrorist group want to come on air or criminal elements that uh, justify themselves for what they are doing, because to be very honest with you, uh, terrorism has no universal acceptable definition. The person you call terrorism might call themselves freedom fighter or fighting for the emancipation of their own land. So uh, when these guys want to get into our military, what they do is that they will hit at military targets and they will start dissipating our military psychology. So Mary Ann, going by what you just said, I will advise the uh, president to you know, declare a state of emergency on our security agents first, not on the Nigerian states. We need to know what the problem is on our security agent because one, they have been demoralized, two, their morale has been dissipated, and three, they are not well catered for. Okay. So uh, Nigeria is at risk. We must address what is happening with the military. If we we'll get it right with the military, then uh, we'll be able to achieve our futuristic uh, defensive index. Well, Dixon Osaje is a security analyst, and uh, Adewale Adimola Justice is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for doing justice to this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Mary Ann. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us. The conversation begins after this break. When we return, we will be discussing the release of the abducted forestry students and the abducted Abia Street University students. We'll be right back.